Let's see, it would have to be around, see, I come to work at 10 o'clock, so that would have to make it around uh, midnight, I guess, yeah. Excuse me, yeah. Excuse me, coming through. Yeah, but yeah, about uh, about uh, midnight, I, I, I was, that's when I found him, I was bringing him his coffee. Coffee? Coffee? You leave the building? Well, no, I keep it down in the basement. Hey, somebody mentioned coffee. Yeah, I brought Mr. Mallory's coffee. I always brought him his coffee every night. Yeah, you still got some? Yeah, it's in the other room, but it's probably cold by now. That's all right. I drink anything. You know how much sleep I had the last two nights? Maybe five hours. Last night it was Betty Davis. Two o'clock in the morning, my wife wants to watch Betty Davis. So we're watching Betty Davis. Did you find out about that key yet, Lieutenant? Oh, it is brutal. Um, the key? Yeah. Oh, no, the super, he comes in at 7 o'clock. Well, you know, she's a terrific actress, this woman. Betty Davis. Forget about it. Um, excuse me. Uh, Kramer? Watch it coming yeah. through. Uh, you, uh, finished up over here? Just about, Lieutenant. Just about. How did he get in? Who? The guard. How'd you get in, sir? With a pass key? Yeah, yeah, I knocked, uh, but I couldn't hear anybody working, you see. But I could see the light shining through the door, and, and that's, that's when I come in, and, and, I, and I found him. Did you touch anything in? What do you think, I'm some kind of a nut? That's your job. I got problems of my own. Lieutenant, this gentleman said he came here to see Mr. Mallory. What's going on in here? Who are you, sir? Norman Wolpert, Lewis Manuscript Service. I'm here to pick up Mr. Mallory's tape for transcription. Messenger service? Manuscript service. What are you doing here at this hour? Why do you come so late? Well, it's the same time I come every night. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right, Lieutenant. I can vouch for that, yeah. Is Mr. Mallory all right? Well, I'm afraid Mr. Mallory's dead. Wh what happened? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. Lou, you take this young man's statement, you talk to this gentleman, and then you can go home. Well, okay. It's all yours, Lieutenant. Sweeney, you getting anything here? Not much. A lot of dust. Leave this here. Her tiny body heaving fitfully. It would not wake her. It was better that she find him gone. Lieutenant, you need a security guard anymore? Saigon and a fighting Why was that? far away. Is it okay if I let the guard go back to the Slowly, lobby? Yeah, let him go. turned away from the window. Lieutenant? Did you hear that? They paid that guy a lot of money for writing that tripe. Wait a minute. Uh, Lieutenant? Wait a minute. We found this in the basement corridor. It's been fired. Hmm. What'd you say you found it in the corridor? Mm -hmm. You mean it was just laying there right out in the open? That's right. We also found some jimmy marks on the outside basement door. That's how the guy got in the building. Thank you very much. Uh, Sweeney? Yeah. Prince, ballistics, please. Sure, Lieutenant. I'm all through here anyway. common criminal, and I want to know why. Well, there has been a crime. Mr. Chase, is it? David Chase. Mr. Greenleaf? Yes, that's right. My name is Lieutenant Colombo. Anybody want coffee? No, I want to go home. 
Why don't you just tell me what the bail is, and I'll take Mr. Greenleaf home. I wouldn't know, sir. I'm uh, not connected with the traffic division. I'm attached to homicide. Homicide? Yeah. What is all this about? I just want to ask Mr. Greenleaf if he can identify a voice for me. Now, just a minute. Won't take long. Offering him hope and a chance to wash away the wounds of war that had brutalized him. He turned to look at Lee Chen sleeping on a straw mattress. It's Alan's voice. Her tiny body heaving fitfully. He would not wake her. It was better that she find him gone. Saigon yeah, this is Alan Mallory. Far away. Slowly, he turned right, away. I've identified the voice. Can I leave now? That's right, sir. I'm afraid this man is dead. Oh, God, no. But who? Why? That's what I wanted to ask you, Mr. Greenleaf. The medical examiner sets the time of death around 10.30. Now, would you mind telling me where you were at that time? Riley, you don't have to answer that question. David, I don't mind answering the question. The fact is, Lieutenant, I don't... I don't know where I was. Yes, it's true. I saw Alan last night briefly at a press party. We had some words, not important, but I was very upset by it. I drove around. I had been drinking quite a bit. I don't remember anything about last night. Poor Alan. I wonder if you can identify this key. No. Would you mind taking a closer look at it? keys look alike to me. Yes, sir. But I believe this is your key. The building superintendent told me that Mr. Mallory's office was leased 18 months ago by you. This is one of the two keys that he gave you? If you say so. Get to the point, Lieutenant. We found this key on the office floor, a few feet from Mr. Mallory's body. Well, evidently it belongs to him. No, sir. We checked the victim's key ring. The one that fit the outer door was on his person. This key, your key. This is the fellow that bothers me. I've already told you, I don't know anything about it. Well, what bothers you about it, Lieutenant? How it got there? Could have been dropped days before. Do you own a 38 Smith & Wesson revolver? Now, just a minute. David, I have nothing to hide. Yes, I do own a pistol, but I don't know what make it is. Lieutenant, why are you asking me all these questions? Well, surely you don't believe I had anything to do with Alan's death. Well, obviously, some thief broke into the office when Alan was working. There was nothing to steal. Mr. Mallory's wallet wasn't disturbed. And you just said that you were drinking last night. And you can't explain your whereabouts at the time of the death. Riley, I'm sorry. I must insist you answer no more questions, at least until we've had a chance to confer. Officer? That is, unless Lieutenant Colombo is placing you under arrest. Arrest? No. No, no. Mr. Greenleaf, you're free to go. I thought he might be. But I may be asking some questions later on. Of course. I'll be at home all day. Dear God, poor Alan. David, I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. Just one more thing.